you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? It's Big Porky here. Still the voice of hardcore boxing. Shout out to Pow UK. Don't think it's running anymore, is it? it used to be Ryan Rhodes uh, business. Everybody knows I'm a Ryan Rhodes fanboy. I've got a bit of flu today, but uh, I get accused of all sorts when I've got flu. Uh, uh, right. Life's too short. A friend of mine's dad died. So, it's like lady that runs chemist, so it's not very nice. I've got a card, but like I just said, life's too short, so make every day count. Make every day count. And be like me, not sitting still. Mentally deranged, aren't I? You've got schizophrenia! You've got schizophrenia! I am. Don't believe what Steffi Wall says. You've got schizophrenia, you've been on tablets since you were 10. No, it's actually 12. Right, let's get straight down to business. I want to thank everybody who has been subscribing to the channel. I want to thank everybody for that. Uh, put that there. It means a lot to me that. I want to thank everybody who's been sharing the videos because what, we, what I have on here, we have something called analytics. And it tells me everything about everybody. And we've got a bit of an upgrade on this computer so we get to find out a little bit extra. Not much, but can't get your IP addresses, but I can. we can find out uh, I can find out how many people are subscribed and watching uh, in, in different people in a week and I can find out the percentage of them that don't subscribe now. I think the subscription thing, I think it's just an ego thing really, isn't it? Uh, the main thing is for me that people in the boxing industry, who I class as my peers, and I also class hardcore boxing fans as my peers because everybody's got an opinion, haven't they? So. As long as them people are watching the videos, I'm not really bothered about casuals, but if you get a casual audience, you can get a few quid out of the job, can't you? But as regards uh, the doing what I'm doing to get for financially, I think it's not there, is it? It's, uh, you know, 11 quid a week is not going to feed your family, is it? So, well, you know, it's uh, you never know what's around the corner, do you? Let me just. Uh, I'm just going to turn this off because I can't. There's that much coming through messages, which is what I've always wanted, but sometimes it gets overwhelming and I don't really handle pressure very good, to be honest. It all gets jumbled up in my head. Uh, what can I, what can we speak about? I jotted a few things down this morning. Uh, well, this is how confused I'm bringing two, got, running two offices here, but two, two pads. That's the Dennis one. Put that there. Check that up there. video the I compared him didn't I to Ortiz now Hatman strikes back you're you are you need to shut your mouth Hatman right you're hiding behind the camera you you're behind the camera mate I'm in front of the camera you and your chum sporting icons you're behind the camera I'm not saying you don't know anything about boxing I'm not saying that at all because 
I think you'd be obviously study the game, don't you? You've got massive followings. I'd love to have a following like Atman and Sporting Icons. They give a living out of it, don't they? Good luck to them. The point is this. When I put a video out going on about Povetkin and Ortez, people send me stuff and you've got Hatman taking my ideas and putting it into his own little video. Why why can people do that? I mean now that now that I've I've somebody now that somebody sent now that somebody sent me it and I've seen it, I can't I can if I were ever gonna give you any respect, Mr. Hatman strikes back. I can't now because I don't like anything like that like that. Brian King once told me that, that Michael Benson he pays stuff of other people and puts it out as if it's his own. I mean that's like me 25 years ago coming and fitting a window here and, and not having any silicon to finish window and some guy just turning up sealing it up and billing them 400 quid for window and going around telling everybody he fitted it I don't get that so the point I'm trying to make is stop with the stop it stop it hat man nicking my stuff alright but now that we're on the subject, huh, and White. Well, people can't seem to help themselves, can they? So somebody's managed to get my phone number. Oh yeah, they always get it, don't they? But they left me a scary message saying that basically they're going to kill me in my own bed if I do any more Dillian White videos now. What can you do? Well, it's not good, is it? Is this where it's come to? And we're going to be ruled, ru ruled by fear. You know, I know people in media who go to press conferences and frightened to death. These people are frightened to death. And it won't deter me. Obviously, I watch my line of not questioning. What's the word? I watch what I say, but. You've got to be a re you've got to be right, haven't you? What you say now? Somebody sent me something. What somebody else had put out. I'm not going to say his name, but a YouTuber had put something out saying that Andy Ruiz didn't want to fight uh, or uh, Dillian White. Now I know somebody that knows a promoter in America, right? Let me tell you this. An offer were put to Ruiz, but <laughs> you know when you put a low offer to somebody. For example, for example, if Cash Alley don't want to fight Dillian White, but they've got a close ranking, right? What Dennis would do is he'd ask people their opinion. You know what I'd say? I'd say just make an offer and we'll put it on social media that an offer's been made to Dillian White to fight Cash Alley. But offer Dillian 100 grand. Dillian's on what? 3 million a fight. Instead of giving him 3 million, offer him 100 grand, which is a low ball. It's about the same as offering Andy Ruiz a million, in it, when he's been getting 15 million to fight Joshua or 20 million in Saudi, wherever it were. So offer them a low offer, then they're going to go, oh, I'm not fighting for that. Then it's turned down then. So then we can go on social media with Cash Alley, can't we? And say, we're turning cash down. You don't want that smoke. That's how it happens. Say, for instance, if I sell a car, I can explain it. Bloke next door, he's got an S320 Merc. 126,000 mile, wants 4750 for it. And I had to go in it and I thought, nice, it's an 07 plate though, but probably one of, one of the best cars I've ever driven. I'd say you were nearly as good a driver as that Rolls Royce, right? That they want 90 grand for, right? So I said, well, if I had a deal with you, I'm going to want more money. I'm going to want money to drive that Merc. 
and you take my mate because mine's a 14 plate, they then give you a low offer and I'm like, oh my god, you're joking me, that's less than trade. Yeah, you've come to us, Porky. It's called low balling. The point I'm trying to make is this. If Dillian White really, really, really wanted to fight Andy Ruiz, they'd have made him a proper offer, wouldn't they? Now, if he really wants to fight for a world title, Dillian, why didn't he fight Joshua at Wembley last year? He didn't, did he? Everybody was saying for months, oh, it's going to be Dillian and Joshua. Didn't happen, did it? Didn't happen. And they've still got that date, haven't they, at Wembley spare. So, Dillian White's best belt he's got at home is a British title, and I think he's a good fighter. I think what Mark Tibbs has done for him is fantastic. Well, they've gone 11 and 0. 11 and 0, is it five knockouts or something? Something like that. 10 and 0, 11 and 0. He's undefeated with Mark Tibbs, so is Arvio, and so is Richard Riaporte. Mark Tibbs is emerging as probably one of the greatest trainers in the country, one of the greatest young trainers. So, respect to him. I don't have a problem with Dillian White, but I deal in facts. Now, Hatman is supposed to deal in facts, and sporting icons are dealing facts. I haven't seen anything that sporting icons said about Dillian, but people will send me if he does. If anybody send, does any videos that come out after mine and they're of similar content, there's people out there who are opposed to me that will send me them. I'm not saying that the grasses or anything like that, they've just got me back, haven't they, and these people. You know, they'll come to the shows as my guests. And that's how it works, you do favours for people, don't you? I've never sold a ticket to anybody yet. Alright? Dillian White's best belt, in my opinion, was the vacant British title. Is the British title better than a trinket belt? Of course it is, isn't it? Forget, I don't want to hear about you get a belt for ranking. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear that. Not at that level. If you could, if you can't get a British, I understand that, yeah. But Dillian's not back Joshua, has he, for a world title. He doesn't mention Lewis Ortiz's name. He doesn't mention Joe Joyce's name. He doesn't men mention Daniel Dubois. There's three people there. Don't mention the names. He don't mention Hergovic. Now, Daniel Dubois and Joyce are with Frank, aren't they? So forget them. Hergovic and Joshua. There we had Earn. There we had Earn, them two. Hergovic and Joshua. Don't mention them. Why not? Why not? It's easy to hide behind politics, but is, every, is everybody wrong? Are we all wrong? <laughs> Are we all, is everybody wrong? Ortiz twice. Poole left Brazil, that's four people. And Joshua's cherry on cake. Now, you know when you tell a lie, do you know what you have to do? My dad told me this when I was young, when I was about six years old. You gotta tell another. Then you gotta tell another, aren't you? And this light becomes huge. A bit like people who give money to charity, innit? And they get asked about it. It just becomes huge and huge. So you gotta nip it in bud, aren't you? You gotta come clean or put them in the place. And what I'm seeing at the moment, nobody's coming clean, but people are being put in the place, aren't they? People like me. I get put in my place, don't I? I prefer somebody to come up and tell me to my face. They say, I don't like what you said. I say, okay, well it's an opinion. Alright? Nobody's getting threatened on this channel. We don't threaten people. Maybe I might have been a bit harsh the other day on Stewie Hall, but huh, I know things what what's gone on in the past and I didn't like the tweet that somebody sent me, a screenshot. So maybe I was a bit harsh on him, Stewie Hall. I apologise. But sometimes, we all lose our heads, don't we, but I ain't gonna have anybody threatening me. You know, with a Cockney accent. Just go over a video, because I said that he swerved Ortiz. Ortiz has been swerved by everybody, though, hasn't he? 
Gillian twice. Tyson Fury didn't want to fight him. He did an interview on Bayloric TV with England Jones Tyson and he said, Luis Ortiz, who wants to fight him? He's in the who needs him club. He doesn't sell a ticket, he doesn't speak English, Southpaw, big punching, undefeated Cuban. The list goes on and on and on, doesn't it? You saw what he did with Wilder, didn't we? Well, now, Hatman, in his wisdom, has decided to come out and do a video comparing Povetkin and Ortiz and saying which is the best one for Dillian to fight out these two. That's a dig aimed at me. Now, uh, let me just say this, Mr. Hatman. Ortiz is six months, is he his birthday in March? Povetkin, September. So they're the same age, aren't they? They're both 40 at the same age. Povetkin's 41 this year, isn't it? End of summer. Ortiz is 41 in March, I might be wrong. So next year, they're both 42. Is Dillian playing waiting game? Now, four years ago, right, Ortiz fought Dave Allen, didn't he? Or it three or four years ago. He fought Malik Scott, but nobody else has gone near him. None of the big contenders have gone near him. Dillian's a contender. He's a world ranked fighter. We had devastating left hook. And he's a tough kid, let's have it right. He's a tough kid. He's got a heart on him, hasn't he? He gets down, he gets up. That's hard. You can't knock that. You can fight. Well, we're a world kickboxing champion as well. You're in a lot of trouble if you've got beef with him. But I've been in trouble all my life. Would I be threatening the Dillian White if he dragged me into a toilet or outside a pub? Of course I would. My arse would drop out, wouldn't it? It's a lump, isn't it? But we're not going to be bullied here at Porky's Corner. I won't, I won't be bullied. Whether it's Dillian White or fans of his or... It is what it is, isn't it? I know two people in the industry, right, who are, who are, how can I say, big hitters or... Been doing it years. Over 30 to 40 year in industry, right? And I know one who's been doing it 25 years, right? These people tell me that when they speak to Dillian White or people when it's to do with him they're, they're on edge and I ain't gonna be like that I'm not gonna be like that you all saw the video that Ultra Tech Sports Raw did last night about Dillian White if you didn't go and, go and watch it and give him a subscribe and tell Ultra Tech Porky sent you alright now Ultra is behind the camera now he's very similar to me Ultra very very similar and uh, he chooses to be behind camera so he loses a tiny bit of respect off me for that but I know his reasons but these other people that are doing merchandise uh, like Atman and the sporting icons doing merchandise as well I'm not sure they're doing merchandise and they're getting a lot of views then but it's all on back of what Hearn's doing. Now, if you need to know anything about what Hearn's gonna do next, all you need to do is follow Sporting Icons and Hatman, because he'll throw them a bone before announcement. Now, I've known this ages. You just gotta watch what they do and you'll get to find out. Now, they're now throwing Povetkin up against Ortiz. Now, how it works is this. Frank Smith, or Anthony Lever, probably Frank, They'll get in touch with him and they'll say, right, this is what fight we're going to make. We're going to make Dillian against Povetkin, which I'm told is a done deal. And can you just put him in a good light? So they'll, they'll say, who is the best fight? Who is the best pick for Dillian? Povetkin or Ortiz? Povetkin's a gold medalist, WBA regular champion. And he's 40. Or Ortiz, who is older than Povetkin, they might not even say 40, they might just say he's older, or Ortiz who's older than Povetkin, he never won a world title, well he won WBA interim and number one ranked, and Eddie Hearn could have, and I've heard that off a very good source, he could have upgraded him to regular belt, the same belt that Povetkin had, 
and he went to the Olympics, but he didn't win a medal, right? So you could say they're both very, very similar, but who would you say is the most shot out of both of them? I'd say they're both shot, but I'd say Povetkin is an easier fight for Gillian White than the other guy, because the other guy, Otis, is a southpaw, isn't he? Now, Povetkin's best win in recent times is who? David Price. Do me a favour. Do me a favour. Right, but the point I'm trying to make is this. Hatman, stop what you're doing. Stop what you're doing. Alright? So, peace out. Keep on trucking, keep supporting. Thank you very much for subscribing. I've been looking at the subscribers, I've got 2,602. I oh, know, yeah. What's that under the month while I've been doing it? It's not a lot, is it? But we've only really been trying for a year, haven't we? We've only really been trying since uh, middle of January last year, so 12 and a half months. But, so I want to thank South Yorks Packaging. I want to thank Limitless Web Design. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And I want to thank Innovation Alloys at Sheffield, AJ Hobson. How are you doing, AJ? Hope you well. Somebody else I wanted to thank. I'm in a thanking mood today. Rico Elia at Lead Right. Give him a shout out on Twitter. Give him a follow. I'm not on Twitter though. I can't uh, get on. Every IP address I've ever used is blocked. So thank you very much for Rico helping me uh, get the channel going. Uh, I never thought I'd get to this stage I'm at now, it's been an hard slog. We don't buy any views or any subscribers, we're just a small little outfit, a tiny little outfit. I want to thank Rico, I want to thank K Official. If you need any clothing, go to K Official. Uh, and I want to thank Nicola, uh, who's the sister of the owner of this place. Thank you very much for getting me on the right path. I haven't forgot what you did. And I want to thank Den. I've been with Den 58 months now, haven't I? I've been a pain in the arse, haven't I? It's caused more aggravation for him, but I don't know. I'm loyal, aren't I? So I messed up, but I'll tell you. I want to thank Mick Whale as well because it's it's obviously Josh is the first person that I've had massive input in and that I signed for Dennis who's won a belt so even though it was one of my ideas to get Liam Cameron to go down and wait but they want to they, Liam were already with Dennis wasn't he and Chris will be behind that as well but I feel so for Liam I've been thinking about him all day Liam Cameron just guts me but I loved it when he won the belt but I was gutted he won it off Sam that's the problem you have isn't it when you have internal fights because I like Sam and I like Liam but like I said Josh Whale because uh, it was my project I, I, and I pushed for it and I got back so it's a big it's close to my heart that. And it, that bo that's what boxing can do to you isn't it I signed Robin Reed for Dennis as you know but that didn't work out and uh, Robin were a bit past it then, but if Nigel Ben were going to fight, well, Robin could have had a fight as well, couldn't he? So, um, get his son a few quid, but it didn't happen. And what other one I signed? Frankie Gavin. And we made IBO World title fight, and it collapsed two weeks before. And I were like that, one, I? When I heard, I were really in bits, and I hated boxing for days after that. And I went out and uh, I sniffed loads of uh, stuff up my nose that I shouldn't have done. And I ended up walking. Uh, I ended up walking for miles, thinking somebody were following me, and it was an awful feeling. And that, that something, but now I think I'm mentally stronger now. Mentally stronger to handle the knockbacks, but it's been a pleasure working with Josh and Mick, a mixed team. And we've got big things planned for the future, working with them because they've got a conveyor belt there coming through. And I want to thank Mick for getting me. I, I film all amateur shows, don't I, for Mick and his mate Chester. So, and I don't take a penny out of all that. And there's people who do these shows, referees, judges, security people, and they all take money out of it, out of amateur shows. All these people that love boxing. Oh, I love it, do it for love of sport. 
Yeah, you're taking money though, doctors as well. And venues, all that's to be paid for. They love boxing that much, amateur boxing, and it's fuck kids and we love it. It's fuck community. Yeah, but they take money as well, don't they? Well, I don't. I do it for free off my own. It takes ages, don't forget. You leave in the house at half five, getting in at midnight, and then you, you, you know, you're six, seven hours sorting everything out day after, so you, it's a two day job, isn't it? So I want to thank Mick as well, Mick and Den, uh, and Michelle in Dennis's office. I'm going to thank him though today, aren't I? That's about it really. And I'll thank all you people for subscribing and watching. Because we're on straight and narrow, aren't we really? It's all looking good and promising. And the porky mugs, if you want to buy a porky mug, I keep getting after by them. I don't really like to do merchandise, I think we bought ten of these. And get them all away, but I'll look into it, all right? Because uh, people keep asking all the time, but I don't want to be one of them people that's forcing stuff on people. I'll buy loads of stuff and get stuck with it. So, and nobody really wants clothing and that. I've, you don't want porky shirts and that. It's cringe, porky hoodies and all that. But I think everybody should have a porky mug. But the main thing is with them, I've asked about it's the postage, innit? If anybody knows how much it is to post a mug in a little box, let me know how much it would be to post a mug and uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do, but I think a couple of my clothes pals have got one, a couple of mugs, but it's not something I want to do. But I think that's about it really, so I've only got three weeks left and I want Chandler Fury fights Wilder. I kind of hope he don't fight him, but it's one of them things, innit? So peace out. Keep on trucking.